In this Touch Designer project, we can look at how we can use depth maps pulled from MIDAS functions from a 2D image and projected into a 3D sphere so we can look around monoscopically yet have some uh, bit of parallax and depth to our image. When you open up this project, you'll be met with some settings here described as well as some different parameters we can play with. I'm going to turn on this operator here just so we can see it as a background as we work and describe. So first off, I have a preset of a couple of different scenes just to show as a demo of what can be done. You can also use your own content in its place, but just for the demonstration I decided to pick four different images that we'll discuss later. We can also turn on the depth view and just see how the depth is being pulled and mapped across this area and compare it to some of our scenes. As we can see, some of our mushroom forest here, perhaps in our candy shop, and see the different shelves and window panes, and then back to our neon apartment. The next function is the mouse sensitivity. If we turn this all the way up to two, we notice that things move very, very quickly. You can bring this all the way down to zero, and now there's no mouse interaction. I left this as a feature since everybody's resolution or their screen might change. Maybe their mouse sensitivity is different. The default's going to be 1 for here. For the camera sway, this is going to be a 3D option. If I turn this all the way up to 1, but I keep the mouse still, you'll notice that it actually automatically moves about the scene. You can kind of see around corners a little bit. gives you some depth and perspective. This is because it's moving outside of the point of origin. If we just stayed at 0, 0, 0, we would just be looking monoscopically around. So I have this as kind of like a movement parameter so we can kind of get a little bit of a, of a depth illusion, if you will, to see how we're moving in 6 degrees of freedom. It gives a little bit more realism and depth. If we turn on the depth again, we can see how it's moving about that space as well. I have this at a default of 0 0.5. For the camera smoothness, if we have it all the way at 0, we'll notice that the mouse is moving instantaneously with very little latency. If I turn this all the way up to 10, we'll notice that it's more cinematic and slow panning, slow moving. Even if I rapidly move my mouse, it's going to take a long time to just catch up. This is good if you want like a slow movement or if you want to record your output and have something a little bit more flowing. I have this set at a value of 1 for default, just a touch of smoothness so it's not too harsh and too quick. When you open up this project, you'll notice that you have the descriptors of what each one of these settings does vaguely. So we're going to jump inside the projection and we're going to quickly uh, describe how I built some of this and uh, different endpoints of what you could use yourself. So first is the material selector. It not only selects the different scenes, but it actually organizes what we have. So here's my four presets. These were uh, generated in Stable Diffusion. I picked some images that had a lot of interesting architecture and interior space. Even some exteriors work as well, as long as they have some bit of detail and features to them. Images that might not work, I would stay away from things like blank landscapes or vast oceans. They don't have a lot of interesting geometry within them to be able to pull a believable depth map that can be used for much of anything in terms of displaying how something would look in 3D. Matter of fact, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, it's hard to tell how far away the horizon really is. In this case, we can see that there's a lot of depth and a lot of busy things going on in this scene. Let's talk about the depth maps that we actually pulled from here. So we can see that there's different geometries and details that were pulled from uh, these images here. And we're just selecting them with these uh, chops um, earlier as part of our preset. So when it's image one, it's selecting the corresponding depth map to go with. I also chose to add two flip tops here because the sphere that I'm projecting them onto is technically inverted. But if I flip the image, across its x-axis, then I don't have to really worry about 
uh, any of the normals or the faces uh, later on when I go to render this. So down here, I also put a fit top. It's not a necessary piece, but it was just to ensure that if I was pulling an image earlier that might not be the same resolution as the Nelta, as the uh, Midas function rather, then I wanted to make sure that when it comes time to apply it to our material, that there isn't some kind of offset or some skewing if the aspect ratio is changed amongst the two. Next in this chain, I actually put a level top because we're working in 32-bit color. Um, this is mono, um, uh, monotone uh, color in 32-bit float. And I unclamped its input and I was able to turn its contrast up to 1.5 to add a little bit more uh, definition to this. This will throw the background further. It'll pull the full foreground a little bit closer and give it more definition. So then I dump these into normal maps which will act as the normal for our materials. And then I'm going to be using this as a height map. I also pulled a little bit of color information as well, just to give some def definition to some of the shapes and geometries, like the window panes or some of the floor tiles or walls. This kind of helps in the overall without changing what the depth map was um, being pulled as. It's very subtle. I then add this to our two materials. These materials here are just, uh, showing between the color space and the depth space without color, but they both contain the uh, the height map. As you can see, the parameters are mostly uh, default right here, and I'm not using parallax at all. I am using displaced vertices, because without displacing the vertices, then you just get your normal projection of your color space without any uh, manipulation of the actual geometry. So we turn that on and things actually uh, bend and twist. Now this preview mode right here is not very detailed and we'll discuss why later compared to what I'm actually projecting onto. There's more of a resolution of the polygons. So you can zoom out of this. That's our, mater our material selector. Um, inside movements, it's just a couple of parameters of how I'm ingesting the mouse what I'm doing with the mouse just to make sure that it's either smooth or whatever. And then I send this to a couple of math because although the mouse is moving from a value of one to negative one, uh, it's not in degrees. So this just changes how many degrees of spin that it might uh, be. I also included these uh, noise parameters, which is going to give us our translation across X, Y, and Z for that parallax uh, illusion that we talked about earlier. I merged the values export them. I use this as a little preview just to see that it is or isn't doing something. Um, I prefer the trail chop over this. It's not a necessary piece. It's just a visualization. But when we zoom out of here, we see that it is doing something. Then we finally get into our rendering. Uh, it's rather straightforward and simple. I added a sphere. I switched it to polygon mode and I added the frequency of 30. The reason being we want more uh, detail in our geometry so we can have a better uh, mapping of our depth and height field. Uh, if we took our height map and tried to project it onto something that's low poly, then it wouldn't know what to do with the vertices. Uh, speaking of vertices, they don't come with tangents. So I had to add them in with an attribute create. Without tangents, everything is just one color space. Although it does retain its geometry, it doesn't know what to do with the colors. So I add the tangents on and pass them through to this geocomp and now we can kind of you know see around. If I back out of this, you'll see what it's actually doing to my sphere. It's actually deforming the very vertices of it according to the instructions from the depth map, which is pulling from the material. But our perspective is going to remain inside of this. So while we're inside this space, we can kind of see from the point of origin uh, what it would appear to be the equirectangular mapping is reprojected and unwrapped and put onto our sphere as gives the illusion that you're inside the room. The camera right here is going to be rigged with all the parameters that we talked about earlier from the movement. The only change that I made is I inverted the X mouse axis. So when you're scrolling from the left to the right, it's not inverted. So this helps you if you wanted to look at something off to the screen to the side or maybe you want to look at a point of interest down here. 
if I didn't invert that, then it would glide off screen as you tried to chase it. It would be inverted and it would not very intuitive in terms of uh, moving around. You can also use other inputs such as a MIDI slider or build your own UI or the different peripherals might actually help if you wanted to be able to look around with something different. You can even link this to music if you wanted to or automate it so it just uh, slowly pans around by some different you know values that will give you more of a cinematic look. I just left it in for the purpose of this tutorial. If you open up this file, you'll get a uh, native mouse function just according to what size monitor you're viewing this as. I then send this to a render. It's going to be outputting at 1920 by 1080. Uh, this resolution is just a preference. If you have a smaller output or a larger, that's up to you. Uh, I do use a anti-alias of 16. It's turned up a little bit from the default of four. Once again, just a preference to give a nice you know, look to everything that's going on. The inputs that I used for this, the imagery happens to be uh, a rather high resolution, so it benefits from having that high render space as well on that top. So as you can zoom in, there's a good amount of detail that's there when I go to map it out. Specifically, it's at 4096 by 2048. Same thing with the depth maps as well. So as we zoom out here, this is the project as is. Uh, I will leave this below as a link so anybody can grab a hold of this and download this. Um, this was made in a version of Touch Designer 28040, and it should be compatible since no changes were made really before that except for annotations and changes from this point on to current. Uh, I don't believe they've added anything that would uh, that would make anything uh, not work or not operate. There might be um, some specific errors, but all the imagery and everything is locked within the project, so it's not requiring any external files or any dependencies whatsoever. This should be just native touch designer with everything that it comes with.